Hello again, I have my son here, uh, Griffin, and we're talking about you know alcoholism in the family, really talking about his experience with his mother, my wife, and she passed away a little over four and a half years ago. Um, one of the, I always wanted to ask you, what was one of the incidences that you realized that maybe your mother was a little bit different than other mothers, that she, you know, maybe she had some kind of issue? Because I know we've talked a lot about different uh, situations, and there were so many, but I remember that, that one situation that you were mentioning. Yeah, so... Um she, I think that was when I was in high school. High school, I think yeah. I was younger. And uh, she had just gone to a rehab facility and come back. Uh, and at that facility, right. they had uh, horse therapy, and she really enjoyed that. But she loved the horse therapy. She she always got, because she was very emotional. She got a lot of emotions from the horse for some yeah. reason. She well, she was, always loved animals. She we always had pets. And, yeah, she always, she's an animal girl. Right. Uh, but there was a point not long after she came back where she left the house and she didn't we didn't know where she was for i think two or three days two, two or three days uh, right. maybe we called the police and we drove around and just we went everywhere just no idea where she was uh and then we got a call when my dad and i were at the gym uh we were in our gym clothes right. we're, we, we're at the clubhouse <laughs> at our neighborhood that we live in and we got a call from the police that they had found her yeah and uh she was in the hospital. She had been passed out in the lawn in front of some place. A uh, park down by uh, Old Town Temecula. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And the, the police gave me a courtesy call saying they found my wife, they found her purse, and that she was at the, at the hospital. And then you and I went to the hospital. Yeah, so we went to the hospital and she was just, I mean, she had been drinking that entire time. But, you know, she was probably blacked out for three days straight. Yeah. I mean, she was just incoherent. Uh, and we, we went to her bed, you know, in our gym clothes. Our gym clothes. And she just kept talking about the horses, and she was just, like, it didn't make any sense. It was like a, It was really, un- she was very It was like a mental break. It was... And she, well, the thing is, I think was disturbing is she had, like, mud on her face. And, that's right. And yeah. blood, because she had fallen down. I mean, she yeah. kind of looked like a homeless person. She, and, she and, just, and, it's probably the worst I've ever seen her. It was very bad. Yeah, that was, that was, that was the tough. And, uh... She just kept screaming about horses. The horses said everything was okay. The horses, you know, made everything better. Yeah, she, she seemed like she was kind of unhinged. And I mean, I, I was at the hall, you know, I went to the waiting room when I was a kid, and I just sat there until right. <laughs> I could go home in my gym clothes. Right. That's one thing that definitely and stuck you're, out to me. <laughs> you're probably 16, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, 15 or 16. 15 or 16. Yeah. It was pretty early, but... That was the time you realized she was, uh, she had an issue. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that was the time where uh, it felt like things changed for the worse yeah. in regards to her health, at least. So the big really question for you, Griff, is how did it make you feel when you realized your mother had this issue and that she's probably a little bit different than, than other mothers because she had the, you know, this drinking issue? I, you know, I think growing up, it was tough going to friends' houses and comparing it to, like, their mothers yeah. you know that were you know helping them out and you know maybe doing homework with them or something like that and I'd come home and not really have that because she'd be drinking um, and you know it made me sad definitely and I think I don't know it's, it's complex but just unhappy about the situation in general right. you know I just do you think it, think it caused you to be able to do kind of withdrawal or be a little bit depressed because of it because it was something you know you weren't you didn't really un- really understand why it was going on did you feel guilt at all you know i think it, it definitely did get me to withdraw a little bit i don't right. think i ever felt any guilt but right. you know in high school you know it's just always knowing that i'm coming home to something like that it, it's hard to right. it's hard to bring friends over or you know to join like a sport or a club or something and you know have all this fun, and then go home, and right. you're back. Well, well, it's kind of embarrassing if you brought yeah, somebody it is over. A bit, yeah, mm-hmm. and you know she had a blower in her car, so you have to drive friends around, right? Yes. <laughs> and blow it, into the it, blower. It, it, the blow into the car to start the car because you know, because she had gotten DUIs at that point. You'd yeah. be mid conversation with your friend, and it would start beeping, and then right. you know mom's got to blow into mom's the car, blow into her car. <laughs> which yeah. yeah, well that was embarrassing, I would say, yeah. you know, but. I got you. Well, thank you for that, Griff. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> you know, again, we're both talking about this just to help other families that are in this situation. And again, if you're ready to work with me one-on-one, I have a coaching program. 
go to the link in the the calendar link in my bio set up a zoom call it takes about 45 minutes to an hour we do a deep dive I want to find out what's going on with you and your family because it's a family disease again please like share and comment we also have the Facebook group called there's an alcoholic in the family it's a growing group really good support group and again thanks for listening